Good afternoon and welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. We're going to come to you live from Crypto Evolve, brought to you by Viable Markets. It's the first industry conference focused on cryptocurrency market structure. Joining me for this segment is Maria Adamji. She's president of Megalodon Capital. Thank you very much for joining us at the Thank conference. You. And how do you see traditional markets embracing and adopting digital assets? Do you think it's a long-term strategy? You know, that's been the theme of this conference. And interestingly, you know, that you ask, because everyone's kind of been asking the same kind of question, it's difficult to say whether it's going to be a long-term strategy, right? Because you have two ends of the spectrum. You have this very utopian view of the world where everything is going to be digital currency based and everyone's going to be on that side of the spectrum and we should just kill fiat. So all the central banks have it wrong, right? And then you have the other side of it, which is traditional market structure, which is my background and, and majority of the people at this conference today. And they're seeing it as a, a, a challenge, right? How do we adapt this thing that's completely unknown, that's disintermediating parts of our business? And really, you know, what is like the actual usability of some of these products, right? So they just sound like very fictional today. Right. So, you know, a, a lot of the buzz that I've heard at the conference is fintech adaption in capital markets, but the, the banks still seem to be slow out of the gate, as you had mentioned. Um, and you also explained why is that, but do you think we'll see an evolutionary process there to, to start adopting this? Yeah, I think they're going to have to, right? right. So I think the banks are also seeing the same thing that the hedge fund community maybe saw five years ago, because they were a little bit earlier at it in this sort of adaptation, that they're starting to see that, you know, we don't have the expertise in-house to be able to do everything. We can't build all of these cool things and sound attractive and still draw in customers and, and sound like relevant relevant in this landscape, so we're going to have to bring in external solutions. And also, you know, the the rise of uh, the digital currency community actually came from the inefficiencies in capital markets, right? Because it's built out of exclusion and complication and multiple layers of checks and due diligence and things like this, all important things, but they're so cumbersome today that, you know, this new thing evolved. So once traditional markets start kind of adapting some of these fintech solutions, becoming more nimble, becoming a little bit more streamlined, I think the two worlds will come together much more seamlessly and adaptation will be like much more of an open door policy as opposed to right now it's like, well, I don't know, you might be too small for us. I don't know if we can do the risk behind your startup. Like, you know, what? And then, and then you also run the risk of the large institutions basically making it an institution light and then yes. that kind of you know, that mitigates sort of what the technology is trying to, Absolutely. to um, fight against. But where, where do you see the most interest and investment when it comes to the financial services vertical? Yeah, it's, it's really going to be around uh, back office and clearing and post trade and all of those things that none of us want to talk about. Uh, in a previous panel, uh, Don, Don Wilson mentioned that you know there seems to be a lot of interest even in BTC around the trading, but not around the application. And I look at that as kind of like a microchasm of what's happening in a grander, grander scale across capital markets. There's a lot of interest in front office, making that efficient, talking about like speeds and go-to-market speeds and, and, you know, making sure that risk is so, so streamlined that you're able to pass through it quickly. But then operationally, the whole thing's so slow. So I execute a trade in mics, but then it takes me three days to settle it. Right. It sounds inefficient. So I think that's where most of the, the funding is going and that's where most of the adaptation is going to be. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Bob. And thank you for joining me throughout the day. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter.